ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Hey there, this is Matt Petrowski here for ISO FileMaker Magazine. You can find us over at FileMakerMagazine.com. In this video, we're taking a look at using the Monkey Bread plugin. Actually, it doesn't matter whether you use the free version or the paid version. I use it for both, and I'm going to show you why it's such a cool plugin. Let's head to my desktop and take a look. All right, thanks for joining me here at my desktop. Number one, if you haven't used plugins, I'm going to do a very quick overview of how and where you get plugins installed, at least here on the Mac, and it's pretty much the same on uh, Windows. You just need to know the path and location. But what we're looking at is the Monkey Bread plugin. So here is the URL right here if you want to go to this. And of course, it will be in the description down below as well if you want to go download this plugin. Now, why should you go download this plugin? One, because it has a lot of free stuff that's very, very helpful. In fact, I, I'd have to say it's one of the reasons to install the plugin, even if you never pay for it, um, is because of what it provides. In fact, if, heading over to FileMaker and we look at the preferences that I have for plugins, here are the four plugins that historically I have always installed. Now, there are many other plugins that are available, but with these four plugins, there's pretty much nothing I can't do within FileMaker. And in particular, the MBS plugin can actually do the paid version, everything and beyond what these can do. Well, I shouldn't say beyond because Scriptmaster, you have full access to uh, Groovy and Java. So there's nothing you can't do with Java. Um, the Base Elements plugin, that one's free, absolutely free. It's good to support it. Uh, B-Box also is free, but I believe it's Mac only. So uh, Base Elements will work on both. Um, Scriptmaster will work on both. B-Box is uh, Mac only. But the MBS plugin, the reason that it is such a cool plugin is there's nothing in the FileMaker uh, ecosphere that it does not support. If you're going to do a application with the iOS SDK, meaning not using FileMaker Go, but making your own application, the Monkey Bread plugin works. If you're going to put it on server, Mac, Windows, Linux, it'll work. If you're going to put it on client, it works. Doesn't matter. Des uh, Mac, Win he covers everything. Now, this is on top of the fact that when you look at the FileMaker plugin, when we go to his website, now, first off, when you download this, recognize that it's going to be a pretty hefty download. But that, that download has everything. It's got tons of stuff. And I'm going to show you how the easiest way to learn what you can do with the Monkey Bread plugin. Because quite honestly, it can be a little bit, um, let's say, daunting. Because when we go to this and we say, uh, this is just in the, where does he have all of the, let's go to the documentation. Uh, documentation right there, and we'll just go to topics right there, which are, we're already on. So on the Monkey Bread website, super important is the documentation link. And Christian, the developer of the Monkey Bread plugin, he makes, literally, he makes it so easy to use this plugin. And that is because his documentation is extremely exhaustive, which is what you always want as a developer. And he makes tutorial videos and sample files that you simply just copy from if you need the functionality that the Monkey Bread plugin has. And this is all, most of it applies to the paid stuff, but we're going to be taking a look at the free stuff really quickly here. But when we look at this and we go to topics, um, 6,912 functions, there's no way that you could have that many things to deal with. So let's get the plugin installed on your machine. How do you do that? Um, easily. He'll walk you through, he's got instructions on his archive, and if you haven't done it before, this is just for any new user, otherwise you can just skip through this area. I have a button here on my FileMaker layout, it says Open Preferences. When we go to the Plugins tab on the Preferences, we have this in newer versions of FileMaker, Reveal Plugin Folder. So I'm going to reveal it here in my Finder. Now there's an issue that we're going to see right here, where when I go to this dialog box, I don't have the plugin installed. FileMaker has multiple places where a plugin can be installed, and one of those places will allow it to work in multiple copies of FileMaker. So if you're a true FileMaker developer, many times you're working in systems that have been developed in FileMaker 18, 17, 16, maybe even 15 and 14, which might not even work on the current operating system. So. As I climb up the chain, I'll actually do that with the command key here. 
we can take a look at where a plugin is stored, at least on the Macintosh, where it's most ideal. We can see right here that we've got, we're on my Mac, on my hard drive, my user, my library, application support. Now in the application support folder, there is the FileMaker folder. Then there's the fi a, a uh, version specific or a folder subfolder specific to a version. So you can see right here that the default install plugin step, a script step that's in FileMaker, that attempts to install it into a folder that is specific to the version that you're using. But if you're a developer, then what you want to do is you want to go up the chain. So if we go to FileMaker Pro right here where you can see 19 and 19 pre-release, if we go one more up, what we're going to see is we're going to see the FileMaker folder. So this is the application support FileMaker folder. Now normally, <clears throat> in older versions, you'll see in this FileMaker Pro Advanced where we had uh, version 18 and 19, it had dedicated folders. Well, when FileMaker went to, um, it removed FileMaker Pro Advanced and just had FileMaker Pro and Pro and Claris Pro now, it's all just one tool and you simply in the preferences turn on the developer tools, Typically, you're going to find it within the version number in a folder called extensions. Well, we want to use extensions and we want to put that right there. Extensions up in the main application support FileMaker folder. And uh, you can look for the paths for Windows as well. If you put a plugin here, which we can see the MBS plugin right there. And again, this uh, the .fm plugin sometimes doesn't resolve and it doesn't actually show as a plugin. That's not a problem. It's going to happen. Um, they're just losing the bundle icon. I don't know why in some cases, but in this case, <clears throat> as long as it says FM plugin, you've got MBS and it's in general extensions. What will happen is FileMaker 17, 16, 18, 19, they will all load this version of the plugin. I only have to have the plugin once. If a plugin is version specific, then of course you're going to have it in the version specific folder um, if that's the case. But now that we know where we install that plugin, now we're going to go through the settings of the plugin. And this is how you control both the free stuff and uh, you can with the paid stuff. But let's go through the stuff that you can get for free. All right, are you ready? Let's go through the settings that you have for the plugin. It's free. I have a dialog, I have a button here on my layout, which if we go into the layout mode, just double click, you can see that the button setup is simply saying you're gonna do a single step of open preferences. Well, you probably already know, you can go up to the FileMaker menu and just access the preferences right there as well. No need for a button. In the plugins, some FileMaker users and developers don't even know this, that some plugins, when you select on them, simply just provide the version number or information. They don't take advantage of this right here, the configure option. Other plugins, when you select them, you can see right there that the B box doesn't use the configure. But the MBS plugin, when you do select that one, not only will it tell you what version you're running, but it provides this option as well. And this is what's important to know. Click on configure and we are going to get a very nice big list of all of the different things that you can do. And we are going to go through all of these different options right now and see how they might impact you and your development. In order to do that, what I'm going to do is I am going to just draw a little circle which invokes a camera on my machine, take a screenshot which is going to bring up a separate application that I have called, uh, make sure that I'm not blocking that. Uh, can I make this one? I can't make it a little bit smaller, but I can push it off on screen. So um, I'm going to turn on all options right now so that we can see all of them and go through this bit by bit. And we'll apply that right now. All right. So with my dialogue above me over here, we can see right now syntax colorization in scripts and formulas. This is very cool because when we are in a script workspace, and we are creating a new script, and it doesn't matter what we do, there are multiple things that the Monkey Bread plugin does. So I'm gonna say, if uh, true, actually let's go into the dialog box for the calculation, and let's put in some code. Um, I'll do FM case right here, and we'll just put in, <clears throat> I don't know that I'm gonna have too much right here as a test, uh, let's say get, platform. Well, you can already see one of the things that the monkey bread is doing right there. 
when I had that selected. So here, and this is free, by the way, when I type in that get and I type that opening parenthesis, you can see right there that it's gone red. This is actually showing, this is taking features which you find in normal IDEs and giving it to us within FileMaker's calculation dialog boxes. So if I type in platform, there we go. I would need a result. Let's just put in false right here. Get rid of all of that. Say my default is going to be true and my system platform is equal to three, meaning mobile. So we'll just put that in there. So number one, the benefits that we get is syntax highlighting, not just in the calculation dialog box, but we also get it here in the scripting workplace. So if we put in a set field and we were going to do something, um, I don't have any fields yet. Yeah, let's go ahead and set my ID <clears throat> and let's set it to uh, override, just anything right there. So these colors, they are coming from one of two places. If you have the monkey bread installed, you can change the colors of all the syntax highlighting. Otherwise, by default, what we have is under the script area, um, we have our tools window. Where did it? Where is it? And when we're in here, view. There we go. Script workspace preferences. So, FileMaker's default option under the view menu right there is going to be script workspace preferences. This is what little control we have over syntax highlighting right here within the scripting workspace. And it's only going to give you these options and these alone, script flow, disabled, incompatible, comment, problem, and table field. You can re uh, revert to default or you can set these to whatever you want. Well, the monkey bread plugin will override this with its own full suite of syntax highlighting. And it would be a completely separate video in order to get into what that alone entails. But in essence, you can do all kinds of stuff. Get it for free. Next one. And you can see right here that uh, in this syntax colorization of scripts, you also have with links and use dash. Now dash is what I use for the documentation. And I'll bring that up and show you but he has provided his own documentation file for Dash, which makes it really easy to use the paid version of this plugin. So you can see right here, if loop block highlighting, that's something that we saw in the script workspace, it was doing it. Links for URLs in comments. Let's take a look at that. Let's say that we are doing a solution and we want to put comment in here. So let's put in a comment of HTTPS and let's go to claris.com. <clears throat> and we'll push that up to the top. We should, if we go in here, does it actually work? I don't know what, whether that's working or not. I would have thought that the links for URLs in comments, that's for some reason, maybe I need to restart uh, FileMaker in order to get that to work. But it used to be that you would be able to click on this. It would become clickable and you would be able to click that. I'll have to ask Christian about that in terms of whether that's active or not. Check variable names. With this checked on in the debugger and with notifications right there, on the Macintosh, notifications come up in this area up in here in the side. If you want to be notified when you are coding whether a variable has been declared or not. So what that means is in conventional programming, I mean, we're going to learn all kinds of things in here. We are going to use a um, in our condition right here if get system platform and <clears throat> very uh, uh if get system platform equals three and variable equals true right here this right here is a notification he's using the syntax highlighting and he's letting us know right here that this has turned red because of this option right here check variable names now, standard programming in most all other environments dictates that you are going to declare a variable first. So that means up at the top of my script, I would have a set variable step where I would declare the variable first. And this is what's known as an initialization. So maybe I initialize this to nothing, which means the word variable won't even exist. But as I save the script, Notice that the red went away. 
So this is a very cool feature that supports something that you, if you're used to it in other programming environments, it's really great to have here. All right, and the next feature is script workspace search box, script workspace go to line box, which I I did turn that on. I just took this, the screen capture before this. Copy script button, zoom button, and uh, then show script IDs in the workspace. So let's talk about all of these right here. These are all these features right here. So this search uh, box right here allows you to search this script. Now, the way that I use this and when this is the most valuable to me, and I'm going to make this dialog a little bit uh, wider because you can see right there that the uh, uh, in this area, a box hid. You have to have the dialog be open wide enough in order for it to show. So this go to right here is this feature right here of the uh, script workspace go to line box. If you're an individual FileMaker developer, this really doesn't matter and you don't need to turn this one on. If you work with other developers, this is super useful when you are doing what's called pair programming because you're trying to coordinate and maybe you're you're both on the phone or you're working through Slack and you say, go to line six. This go to, when I type in the word six and hit, uh, you know, hit enter, I'd use the tab key for some reason it didn't work. Or if I hit the word four, and hit enter, notice that it's jumping to the line. So in uh, conventional programming, you have these really long text files and at line 900, you need to do something. Well, if you're debugging and working on a really complex script with somebody else, this particular feature comes in handy. I'm talking to somebody else and I say, hey, Phil, um, go to line 45. I think that's where the error is. Or go to line six. You type in six and it automatically jumps to that and it should scroll in a super long script. Again, individual developer, you don't need it. The search feature is immensely valuable. Why this isn't even in FileMaker, I have no clue, but it is a godsend for being able to find how many times something occurs. So for example, if I type in variable, I am going to get that and you have to, unfortunately, uh, you can't account for the fact of when a line is selected. Note that when a line is selected here, it's going to use the highlight color. So if you truly want the results of the search feature in the free version of the monkey bread, click outside of all your steps so that it will show all of your highlights on all of the lines. But I can see that this string of variable with the dollar sign occurs two times. Where I use this the most is finding out how context dependent or context heavy, as I think of it, is my script. And context is simply indicated by the double colons. The double colons means that your script is referencing a field. Because it's doing that, that is a context. So many times I'm writing scripts that either I want to make context independent, meaning I'm removing the context where I would then use a set field by name, which that takes the context off of a script and I pass the value in as a parameter. That's where this search feature becomes really useful. Both, you can search for whatever you want to search for, and two, because you can find context, and that's a beautiful tip if you're becoming a, an advanced FileMaker developer. The zoom right here, self-explanatory. It's just going to increase the size of your text, making it much easier for me to show stuff on screen here. Otherwise, I can reset. Now, there's another option that I'm going to quickly cover that applies to this. We'll go ahead and get it out of the way. We'll scroll down to the bottom here. <clears throat> Font for formulas and script workspace. Note that you can change the name, you can change the font that's used. Why FileMaker doesn't do this, I don't know. And you can change the size, making it the default size, making it larger. What that means is the Monkey Bread plugin is actually taking over control of the rendering of this window. It is preempting FileMaker once it's delivered to you and then showing all the fonts in different size. What you will get is some funky rendering sometimes in terms of when the, the script is saved versus not. Also notice right there, not a part of FileMaker, cold <laughs> code folding, provided complements of monkey bread. Again, free in the free version of the script. And finally, <clears throat> of these features, excuse me, something that's super useful, especially if you're on a group 
um, there's a Slack group or other developer groups, Facebook, etc. If you don't, if you need to uh, ex try to explain something and you're trying to solve a problem, maybe you're a new FileMaker developer, do not just ask the question of why does this not work? You can get all of the text from your script or from your uh, tables, from wherever. This copy script text, when I click it, you'll notice that I can bring up text edit here. And if I needed to go paste this, I'll create a new document here. And I paste this. Notice that it's pasting it. It even has the style formatting with it. And I can take this over to Facebook, uh, a forum like FM forums or a Slack group. And somebody can now evaluate my code. There is, you know, otherwise it would be a real hassle for you to try to recreate this. Now there's one additional thing you can do. You select whatever you want to copy. Let's say I only want to copy my if condition. You right click and notice that the MBS plugin is here again. And this is free. And I can copy the content. I can copy the selection, copy the values, hide the script steps, copy the variables, sort the selections, do all kinds of stuff. Now the cut, copy, and paste, this is all specific to FileMaker. But all of these, I've never even used that. What did that even do? I've never even used the hide. That's so funny. Notice that um, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna hide those without it being saved. Oh, interesting. Hide is simply just taking it off the screen. <clears throat> I've never even used that feature here in the monkey bread. He puts so much stuff in here. Christian, you're amazing. Um, let's create a new script. And as soon as I come back to this, I'm going to type another script. We're not going to be worried that it's not there because as soon as we come back, it will be there. One thing that uh, does tend to happen, notice that formerly, this is the very first script in my uh in my database. And the ID that's here is being put here because of the monkey bread plugin. You can see right here where it is show script IDs in the script workspace. When you become a super advanced FileMaker developer, you start to code your solution based on the internal canonical IDs that FileMaker is, assigns to things under the hood because that is an absolutely better, safer method rather than using literal strings and all that stuff. So those are just features that we just hit within the scripting workspace. When we are in define database and we have these fields selected, um, when I right click, notice again, we have access to the monkey bread plugins. We could copy content, copy selection, copy value, sort selection, show find bar. Do you have a super complex table that has over a thousand fields? Let's show the find bar. Would you like to be able to search that? Again, why is it not in FileMaker natively? Who knows, but Christian and the Monkey Bread plugin has solved it and it's free. All this stuff is free so far. So if I needed to find, for example, created, there it is, it just highlighted it for me. Mod, there we go. Go to the next one, go to the next one. Look at it jump through this screen in order for me to find things. That is so incredibly cool. And I've got all of these different options. Man, I'm actually shut. Insert pattern. Christian, are you supporting regular expressions too? Oh my gosh, if he's supporting regular expressions. Okay, another topic for another time. But that's incredible. But you can turn these options off. Go to the relationships graph. Do you need to search for something? There's a search dialog box. And it'll allow you to jump to your individual table occurrences. Again... We're still on the free portion of the Monkey Bread plugin. This is what you get just for installing the plugin. Uh, another, just a brilliant reason for installing this plugin. But let's move on. Let's go to the next stuff in terms of what you find. <clears throat> I haven't checked value lists. Um, he is not providing something in the value lists, although we could do new. And let's say a uh, random value list. We'll put in one, two, three here. Let's just see what happens when we right click. Yep, Monkey Bread is there too. He's basically supporting this, uh, these options in any of FileMaker's dialog boxes, the ability to copy whatever you see. And what's valuable here to me is being able to copy it and paste it over into another location where somebody else can help you solve the problem. And it's just so easy to do. 
You could also do it for the purpose of uh, saving it, but within FileMaker, we can always use the save as a copy as XML, or we can do a DDR export. If you don't know what those are, you can always go to FileMakerMagazine.com and search for those terms, DDR or uh, save as XML. All right, so heading back over to my dialog box, we have covered all of those. Contextual menu for lists and script workspace. We just saw that. Remember column widths in various FileMaker lists. Those are, this is going to come in the form of um, anywhere where it's got the lists where we are going to see right here. I believe it's applying to uh, remembering these settings right here in terms of the columns of the list, data viewer. I don't typically rearrange or resize things very often myself, so um, this may be impacted in other areas. To be honest, this isn't something that I uh, go in and turn on or off. Add find bar with command F to, let's actually switch it to data viewer and list. So if you have a data viewer that has a lot of variables, just like we saw that find bar in our uh, defined fields for a particular table, being able to bring that up, that's available there as well. Show the search in the relationship graph. We just saw that. Show the field table ID checkboxes and search fields in the database design dialog. We saw that search field in the database design dialog. And again, if you're working with IDs, just like we saw in the script workspace right here, where the ID will show, you will also see that in places like the list view. So you can see right here, this column is not normally added within FileMaker. And if you're coding things based on the internal layout IDs, the monkey bread plugin makes it super easy. You don't have to use dedicated functions within the data viewer. You just look at what they are here in monkey bread. All right, <clears throat> custom function and calculation dialog boxes. Yes, it's over there as well. Actually, let's go ahead and bring it up. Do we have the find in here? If not, it's probably right there, show find bar, and it will show up. If you have an extremely large list of custom functions, you can now search those using monkey bread. Show tool tips in debugger for variable and field values. So if you're stepping through something with the debugger, this will show you tool tips, which is pretty nice. Autocomplete variable names, MBS functions, and parameters. So this one is helpful if you're using the paid version. We haven't even gotten to the paid version yet, and the 6,900 functions that this plugin has. Autocomplete variable names, something that a lot of people actually ask for. So I'm here in my code. I've got monkey bread actually working. Let's put in another if condition. And I say if, oh, does FileMaker do that? Does FileMaker automatically pop up and allow me to select from a combination of variables? Well, let's play, let's have a little fun. If variable one and variable two, let's put variable one as false, and let's put variable one as true. I'm telling you folks, this is what FileMaker should be doing. If, <clears throat> oh, variable one, variable two, I just select that and it auto completes. Have you ever worried about the fact that you're mistyping the variable? That is one of the most common things with newer developers. When you declare the variable, this feature should be here. Monkey Bread is doing it. You can't do it in FileMaker without the Monkey Bread plugin. All right. And what else do we have here in our settings? Well, in Monkey Bread, uh, in the MBS functions, let's go ahead and put them uh, in the MBS function here. The Monkey Bread plugin it does things pretty conveniently where each of its function names are not uniquely different. All MBS functions start with MBS right there. He only has one named function, but then you pass it what you want it to do. So now I can actually type in something. And this is where, look at that, all of that completion. Once you are using the monkey bread plugin, he knows in his plugin and he can look at all of his 6,000 functions. So if I start to type is, you can see that I'm getting all of these different functions right here. I don't have to necessarily go to the separate documentation. I simply just, I know I want registered right there. Is registered and it completed it for me. It completed the function without me having to actually even put the following quote and then it jumps to the next parameter that's available within the prototype. This is just awesome stuff. Uh, component, we'll take that off right there because I don't need it. And let's go over here and 
see what else we have. Show text positions for calculations and formulas and highlight brackets. That's what we saw at the very beginning where it was highlighting the opening and closing parentheses. Really helpful when you get to a lot of embedded things. In fact, in other editors, I've used things where each uh, set of parentheses uses a different color. Super helpful in other IDEs. Minimum font sizes and formulas. I have not turned that on. Block the escape key for touch bar. I'm not on a touch bar, but uh, the escape key on a touch bar, I have used a laptop, can cause problems. So that's a setting right there. And we talked about this right here. Some changes apply when, uh, actually, where I'm probably hiding that. And we'll get, there we go. Some changes only apply when you restart FileMaker or reopen the workspace. That's probably the clickable URLs that I was hitting at the beginning of this video. But you can see that the license right here, it's not going to show my, uh, my serial number. But when you actually get to the point where you say, oh my gosh, all of this free stuff that made FileMaker so much easier is now worthwhile that when I take a look at the fact that I have access to 6,900 functions and it can literally pretty much do anything that FileMaker can't, your FileMaker environment just went from FileMaker can do a lot of things to FileMaker can do anything, any and everything. I am not kidding you. Literally, even if the MBS function can't do it, there is an available binary somewhere out there in the open source world that you can install on FileMaker server and the Monkey Bread plugin can actually call out to it. So even if the Monkey Bread plugin doesn't do it, it can make a call to the thing that can do it. You can call Python, PHP, any other language where the problem has already been solved. So in the next video in this three-part series, we're going to go through just some of the cool things that you can do with the paid version. There's no way that I'm going through 6,912 uh, 6, different functions, but we are going to take a look at all of these different areas and discuss where and how and when you might use them. The great thing about this is the fact that his documentation is extremely comprehensive and easy to get to. Um, up at the top, you notice that you already saw that you can break it down according to all Mac, Windows, iOS, or server compatible. And again, this plugin works on all of FileMaker's platforms, and it is absolutely brilliant. So if this is even the only video that you watch in this three-part series about the Monkey Bread uh, plugin, you just got everything that you can get for free just for installing the plugin. And again, I really cannot imagine working without uh, the Monkey Bird plugin. In fact, I just thought of one final thing that I'm going to leave you with that is for free, that is absolutely valuable, that I didn't even touch on. In the FileMaker calculation dialog box, when you are editing code, now when I click here, I'm directly editing the code. I'm not in the FileMaker calculation dialog box. <clears throat> if I click on the little uh, button right there, I go into the calculation dialog box. There is something that is valuable from the Monkey Bread, Monkey Bread plugin that is right here. There's another plugin that does this. It is uh, from Draco Ventions, and I forget what it's called because I actually haven't been using that. It's a plugin that would search your script, but the Monkey Bread, once it highlighted everything, I didn't have a need for that plugin anymore. This value right here, this field, Notice that what I'm able to do in this is I am able to simply check this and it will actually check the syntax. I'm able to run this function without actually leaving the dialog box. So many times when I'm coding, if say for example, I'm testing code, let's say I want to know the result of a particular function. I can put on comment right here, come out, out my code, Use FileMaker's expansion to say, what is the account extended privileges? I don't know, but I don't need to go anywhere. I just click the little run button and I can see right there. It gives me the result right here, which I can copy and take into my formula if I need to do that. So I can now say, if get account uh, privileges, sorry about the jump right there, uh, equals and paste that in. Oh, one thing you do have to do is usually I have to right click and copy and then paste that in. So this allows me to much easier complete 
my code without ever having to leave the FileMaker calculation dialog box. And I haven't even used the two plus tools by and remove table occurrence preference. Huh. I have not even used these uh, functions right here. I am going to let you discover these functions because I'm going to do it right now as I close this video out. So this is what you get for free with the Monkey Bread plugin. Go download it. Um, if you are interested in buying this because he's already provided with so much value and you know that it has stuff that you want, there is going to be a discount code that's available in the description below this video. It may be working for a limited time, so definitely take advantage when you can. But this is what you get if you're willing to just go download the Monkey Bread plugin and install it so that you're able to have all of this functionality in your copy of FileMaker as well. So I'd like to wish you much luck with your own FileMaker development. And until next time, happy FileMaking. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. And we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.